moving beside you. the power of the Lord. Let us now bow our heads in confidence, for we pray now to our God who is on power. Great are you, O Lord, and worthy of our praise. You are in a class by yourself. All the other gods, they are the works of men, but you are the most like God. You are the self-existent one. And so we honor you tonight. We call you Jesus, meaning Savior. We call you Emmanuel, for truly God, you are with us. And we are happy, Lord, that your word has confirmed that not even trouble can keep you away from us. For Lord, you are our refuge and our strength a very present help in a time of trouble. Oh God, you are present in the midst of sicknesses and disease. And you have power over coronavirus and Ebola and all the other sicknesses. You have power over them. Oh God, we are happy to come into your presence where there is fullness of joy. Hallelujah! And at your right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Oh God, the beauty of your house has spurred us to come. For we are no of God that when we gather in your presence there is no low voltage. Oh God, but your presence is living and active. Hallelujah! Oh God, you know, one language in Jamaica will declare, Mass of God, a God. Same God of morning, same God of evening. Mass of God, are you a God? Hallelujah. So, Lord, it gives us much joy to praise you. For it is you, Lord, who give meaning to our lives. Mass of God, without you, we are nothing. And yet, God, with you, we are something. We are somebody. Oh, thank you for giving meaning to life. Oh, Lord, we do confess that we were nothing until you found us. Oh, God. And Lord, though we are coming to your company like the prodigal son, we are slipped out time and time again. Lord, when we have not slipped out physically, we have slipped out in our minds. And the very things, oh God, you told us not to do, we find ourselves doing them. Lord, we have strayed as prodigals, but we have come. And Lord, our strain, Lord, has caused us to become sick and hungry and tired. For Lord, despite the good meal at your table, we have left it like a prodigal son. And we have gone out to the world where we have become sick and tired. Lord, we are sick and tired, but we have come. Lord, we are thirsty, but we have come to you, the fountain of life. Lord, we are cast down, but we have come to you, the lifter of our souls. Lord, there is war within, but we have come to you, the peacemaker and the peace giver. Oh God, we are hard pressed on every side, but we are not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair. But God, we have come to you, the giver and the sustainer of life. So we present this Lenten service to you. Lord, we don't come just hoping that you do the business as usual. Oh, God, and Pentecost, you turn the church upside down. 
So master God, just come and do your thing. Yes. Come and run the show that it won't just be another Lenten service. But God, in the service, Lord, we will see your holiness. But we may also hear your call to service. Whom shall I say? Who will go for us? And Lord, may we be moved like Isaiah. To say, here am I, Lord. Send me to Claremont. Send me to Manik and all surrounding areas. So that we may be the people you have called us to be. Thank you for listening, Lord. For your name, thank you. Thanks for hearing. Thanks for heeding our prayers and for sending the answers. We pray in your Son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. And amen. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, I want to keep thy name in thy kingdom come. I have to be on earth as it is in heaven. Serve God upon this mountain. 
And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, I shall say unto them, The God of your fathers hath sent me unto you. And they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent me unto you. This is the word of God. Theophilus really is the lover of God. 
And so the man who is going to be proclaiming God's word tonight is a lover of God, literally and you know otherwise. So we really welcome him and we can truly look forward to anybody who is a lover of God. You know, it's a good message that is going to be coming tonight. So we want to truly give God thanks for his servant who will be bringing the word tonight. To remind you that the other speaker who was sprinting, Brother Reverend David Menzies, will be on next week at the crusade, at the street meeting, the open air meeting next week. So for the record, just in case you are here for the first time and are not you know, you're not sure, the preacher tonight is Reverend Theophilus Smith. Let us make it welcome.
my brothers and sisters in the Lord, a very pleasant good afternoon. Good evening. Thank you. Thank you for the music because of what I wanted to say next. Why? I am not too always behind it. I was a little bit happy this evening when I saw the bulletin that came out that said that Pastor Mendes, Mendes will be preaching. But as fate would have it, someone immediately wrote in and said, This Pastor Miller will be preaching. And so, here am I. I told the story many years ago about these two friends who loved cricket and they made a pact with each other that whoever dies first and goes to heaven would find out the other cricket is out there and would step back and tell the other one. So, let's say this, John against Peter. John died first. And one night when Peter was sleeping, he heard the voice, John, John. And Peter, 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 Peter. And Peter recognized that it was the voice of John. And so he immediately asked, do they have to get up in heaven? And he said, yes. And he said, guess what? You are opening the party tomorrow. <laughs> it seemed as if it was my love to open the party tonight. <laughs> Just want to thank you, Pastor Gary, for those kind words of introduction. Want to acknowledge the presence of our uh, host pastor tonight, Pastor Lloyd Mitchell. Thank you, sir. Want to acknowledge the presence of the immediate past minister of this church, Pastor Sito, my friend. Good night, sir. Good night to your beautiful wife. Want to acknowledge the presence of our chairman this afternoon. Uh, the Favorite Minister's Fraternal, uh, Pastor Maxi. Just want to acknowledge all who are here tonight. So good to be here in your presence and uh, in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Good to be in Lenten service again. As Christians, we have come to commemorate and uh, to celebrate the sufferings, the death, and the burial of our Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, uh, also, ultimately, his resurrection. I'm excited because of uh, the relationship that these things have brought us into with the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Because if all of these things had taken place and we did not have the relationship that we have with the Lord Jesus Christ, then uh, as Paul would have said in 1 Corinthians, it would all have been in vain. But we thank God for the wonderful relationship that uh, this has brought us into. As I look in the choir, in the audience, I see so many friends that I've come to know and to love and to treasure and to cherish over the years. And uh, it is so good that uh, through the Lord Jesus Christ, we have come to know each other. And uh, we look forward to the day when he will come again in glory and uh, we will be with him. Amen. I have not come with a Lenten service message tonight that I want to see to encourage us. Now that we are in this relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, to hold on. Amen? Amen. To hold on because we are living in some very fearful times. Some very fearful times where earthquakes are taking place all around us with ferocious rapidity. We have a uh, crime that is taking place in Jamaica, landfill of the last time I heard, it was around nine point something person that is being killed in this country on a daily basis. 
And now we have Pearl. Crying times. Crying times. And there are some people who are out there who are seriously questioning God as to whether or not He exists. And if He does exist, why does He allow these things to happen? So these things have a way of even causing us to question our very faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And so I want to bring to us a word from the book of 2 Kings, chapter 6, verses 1 through uh, 8. And so if you will read with me, please, we'll quickly look at the word and then we'll get into what the Lord has to say that has been on my heart. 2 Kings, chapter 6, verses 1 through 8. Now the sons of the prophet said to Elisha, Behold now, the place before you where we are living is too limited for us. Please let us go to the Jordan, and each of us may take from there a beam, and let us make a place there for ourselves, where we may live. So he said, Go. Then one said, Please be willing to go with your servants. And he said, I shall go. So he went with them. And when they came to the Jordan, they cut down trees. But as one was felling a beam, the axe fell into the water, and he cried out and said, Alas, my master, for it was borrowed. Then the man of God said, Where did it fall? And when he had shown him the place, he cut off a stick, threw it in there, and made the iron float. And he said, take it up for yourself. So he put out his hand and took it. Now the king of Aaron was warring against Israel, and he counseled with his servants, saying, in such and such a place shall be my camp. A portion of the reading of the word of God. Father, we pray that you will take your word now, that you will bless it, that you will cause your Holy Spirit, O oh God, to just bathe it, O oh God, with his presence, that you will use your mind, servant, Father, to glorify you, to challenge and to encourage your people. Because, O oh God, in times like these, we need you, and we need to look to you as our guide as our teacher and as our leader. And so pray, Father, that you will just take your word now and just make it come alive in our hearts, in our thoughts, and ultimately in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 The theme of the message I want to bring up to us tonight is to hold on to your accent. Hold on to your accent. An axe, as you know, is a cutting implement. In times of war, it's used to kill and to injure and to hurt others. In times of peace, it's used as a tool to cut wood or any other thing that you could, could cut. It is important to understand, even before getting to the text, that uh, while the axe and the head are separate entities, uh, when they come together, they comprise the whole axe. One may ask, which is more important? I believe as important as the handle is. The axe head is more important. Because you can not cut without the axe head. You can't really cut it. You, 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 you cannot do the job that the axe is supposed to do if there is no axe. And so, it's important that we understand this. But it's important to also understand that for the axe to be effective, it has to be attached to the handle. It has to be attached. And sometimes we are told that it was attached either by a string, but rather by a frog, or maybe it was attached 
by riveting it into uh, onto the handle. Hold on to your accent. The Bible is replete with many stories, incidents, and anecdotes that are designed to teach us lessons about life and about God. What's amazing are the different things that God uses to teach us these lessons about life and about Him. He took the job of a donkey to teach us that in the hands of the man of God, anything can become a powerful weapon to destroy the enemy. He used a donkey to talk to Balaam to let Balaam know how stupid he was behaving. He took a fig tree to teach Jonah that God cares for people more than cares for things. In our story this evening, we see the man of God using an accent to teach us a very important lesson. What lesson can we learn? Of course, there are many lessons. Because we see the man of God uh, causing the accent to float after the discovery was made that it was in the water. And we call that a miracle. Amen? Amen. I still believe in miracles. Still believe in miracles. Just the other day, I had a niece who was sick. So sick that uh, the, 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 the doctors had actually given up on her. Had actually given up on her. She had, she had a heart problem and the, when I heard the news, I was told that the doctors had, did not have much hope in, in, in her, but they were to an operation and they gave her a 10% survival chance. And so we prayed. After the operation was done, they gave her a 30% survival chance. And we continued to pray. And we prayed that the next news I heard was that they had now given her a 50% survival chance. And we continued to pray. The last time I called, she's now walking. And I believe in miracles. And I believe that God is a miracle here. And we need to understand that we still serve a God who does miracles. But that's not the point of my uh, message tonight. Hold on to your accent. You see in the story here, we are told that the man of God, Elijah, who had taken over from Elijah, and it seemed as if there was a school where the prophets were being taught because the prophets who were sons of God uh, were, were, were those who see, were being taught by God's man's servants. And they were living in a communion situation. And so things seem as if uh, the space in which they were living had gotten pretty uh, confined. They, 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 they recognized the need for more space, and so they came to the man of God and they said to him, uh, Will you give us your permission to go out and to cut down some beams by the Jordan so we can build a bigger place? And I love this because uh, they recognized. The, 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 the position of leadership, didn't they? Yes. And so they went to leadership and sought the, sought the advice of leadership. And the leadership was not threatened by the fact that they came. And the leader, leadership gave them approval and so they went out to cut the beams. And while they were cutting the beams, the axe head cut off. And he panicked and he said, my master, the first thing that came to his mind after he got into the water, my master, it was borrowed. <laughs> it was borrowed. And we see where Elisha Ark buried it and uh, the eventual miracle took place. We don't know why it fell off. Was it because it was not riveted properly? Was it because of the fact that something was wrong with the stick? Was it getting old? Was it because of the fact that it was borrowed and he personally was not able to monitor it? Huh? Sometimes 
It, it's a lot of things to borrow things to know. <laughs> but we get to that later on. We don't know. But it came off. But the accent, as we said, is that effective part of the tool that we do with nothing. And as servants of God, as we are in a situation that is so fearful, I want to encourage us tonight to hold on to our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Hold on to our connection with Him. Because if we are going to be effective, if we are going to be uh, able to survive the times in which we are living, we have to hold on to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So hold on to your hands head. Hold on to your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. You may ask the question, why? Because you can lose it. You lost the answer, didn't he? Why when he was in the process of cutting, the axe head fell off? Second Kings chapter 6 verse 2 reveals that while the servant was cutting down a tree, the axe head fell into the water and he lost it. You know, people are fearful of all kinds of things today. They are, they, they are, they, 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 a big earthquake hit us 7.7. And the people were running about fearful and they say, Pastor God, I say, Pastor, you felt it? I said, no. And people began talking about the fact that they have to start turning to the Lord on all kinds of things. And people began, you know, sending all kinds of things on social media. Now that Corona is up on us, I, I, I can't take up my phone and do something about Corona. People are fearful. You know what my biggest fear is? If I should lose my relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't worry, I, I, I'm not bothered about Corona. God has seen this before, amen? God has seen so many before and God has taken care of them. And you take care of this too. And I'm not saying that we must not act in a way that is responsible. Amen? Amen. We must. Yes. But I'm not bothered about it. I am bothered more than anything about my relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And I want to remind you of that. So he lost it and we need to hold on to our accent, our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ because we can lose it. This the loss was made even greater because of two things. First of all, we are the accessor. Where did it fall? In the water. Not on the ground, not in the air, but in the water. If the water was deep and he couldn't swim, you know, he was in big trouble. And it is for that reason why he cried out to the master. You know, sometimes life has a way of throwing us into deep waters. Deep waters. Things that we are not prepared to deal with. And I want to say to us, friends, uh, every time, every day I get up, someone that I know very well has passed on. Someone that I know, I, I mean, I was by the church the other day and uh, a young lady came to me and she was telling me a very sad story of how she was raised and what that did to her life. And it was just so, it, it was so hurting. Life has a way of throwing us sometimes into deep waters. But it's especially then when we need to hold on to our skin. I remember many years ago, when I was in St. Vincent at the college there, this young couple came into the church. John was the accountant at one of the biggest uh, firm in St. Vincent, and he was at the Church of Christ, and we were so happy. He was so enthusiastic, he, 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 he just loved the Lord Jesus Christ, and when, 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 when you see John, the first thing that you see are his teeth. He was always smiling. And if you think that John was a smiling person, wait until you see Sharon, who later became his wife. Yeah. And they got married, and they were so enthusiastic about life. And I remember them because uh, it was around the same time that we got married, they got married the same weekend. 
And after they got married, they went straight to work and they had a child. <laughs> Beautiful baby girl, Inca was her name. And oh, Inca was so beautiful. I mean, everybody just wanted to hold Inca. And uh, I had to leave the island for a while. And when my wife called me, she told me the sad story. That somehow some disease was going through the island, just like now. Amen? Yes. And I'm telling you this because sometimes these things have a way of going very deep. And, and it's related to our faith and we'll destroy our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ if we're not careful. Yeah. And uh, she told me that Inca was sick and they took her to the hospital. While she was at the hospital, she began to vomit. While she was vomiting, no one else was around. And so she swallowed the, the vomit. She died. The fire went out of shell. The smile went. She was just not there anymore. John Hardy went to church anymore. And we could see what was happening as the relationship began to unravel. It was not too long. That they have until they have a divorce. You see, for the first time they were getting into deep waters and they did not know what to do. They couldn't handle it. And I'm saying, friends, there are gonna be times in our lives when we will be thrown into deep waters. Sometimes it's a, it's a relationship that has gone back. Sometimes it's a place that you're in place. Sometimes a job that you lose. But I'm saying whatever the thing that may be, hold on to your head and go through this. Because if you don't keep that connection with the Lord Jesus Christ, you can be in for trouble. You can be in for trouble. I have seen many lengthened uh, uh, times that have passed to Easter's and one of the things that I, I'm not a superstitious person, but one of the things that I have looking at not just the subjective reasons, but I, I have looked at things from an objective way, and, and I recognize that particularly in this time here, Satan is on the ground. Particularly this time, and Satan will do things during this time, just as he did to the Lord Jesus Christ, that will throw your faith off its kingdom, so to speak. That will make your faith lose its equil equilibrium. And uh, you begin to question the Lord Jesus Christ. Hold on. If you ask it, whatever the case may be, may I remind somebody tonight that we need to hold on to our answer. You see, the word of God reminds us that Jesus said in John chapter 15, he said, I am the vine, and you are the branches without me. You can do nothing. You are ineffective. You cannot do anything if that relationship with me becomes lost because of something. So during this time we're encouraged tonight to pray. Let's keep praying. Amen. Yeah, Let's keep praying. The devil is like a roaring lion seeking whom he will devour. Let's continue with our devotion as tedious and as difficult as it may be. Keep your devotions. Keep your time with the Lord Jesus Christ. We look at the life of Jesus and we, we, we see that whatever was going on in, in his life, one thing that he did not give up on was prayer. Yeah. Even in the Garden of Gethsemane, yeah. Jesus Christ was there praying. He did not lose his accent. Hold on to your accent. Hold on to your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. The second thing that made the loss even greater was the fact that the accent was not even his. It was borrowed. You know, if the accent was his, 
It would have been bad, but not too bad. The guy would have, you know, you could have stood the loss of it. Growing up, there are some things that my parents always said to me. They always said, Mother has, Father has, not be the child that has his own. And I have lived my life that way. The other thing that they always said is that when you borrow something, prepare to borrow to, to buy two. Because you see, after, so, you know, that sometimes when you borrow to some people, it might be on the go, and you don't know, and it's just that you borrow it, so it comes from back. And guess who's going to have to pay for that? And guess who's going to have to pay for the next one? Then you still need one more or two. That's why they borrow it in the first place. So prepare to buy two. We are living in a power power society that is constantly encouraging us to borrow. You know when God spoke to his people in, 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 in the book of the Jeremy, he said, he said, don't borrow. He said, don't borrow. But we are living in a society that, comes, that constantly encourages us to borrow. If you want a car, go borrow. If you want a house, Go borrow. If you want an education, go borrow. And if you want a woman, go borrow. And you want a man, go Did you hear the news on how it dealt with? This soldier went home. And when he went home, somebody was borrowing his wife. That's the society that we live in right now. They are encouraged to borrow. I will borrow everything. We need to understand, friends, that when it comes to our relationship with God, we can't borrow that. We can't borrow it. We need to understand that Paul told Timothy, he said, uh, Timothy, I love the faith that is in you that was first in uh, your grandmother. But I love what he said at the beginning that he said, which is knowing you. You see, even if we start off on somebody's faith, because someone has to lead us to the Lord Jesus Christ, don't you? Yes. Even if we start out there, yes. we need to understand that after a while we must get to the point where we have a first hour yes. and deep relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. I love what the Samaritan said to Jesus after the woman went out and she spoke to the men of the village. After they came, we are told that they said they wanted to hear Jesus and so they, they, they spent time with him. Two days. And after that they said to Jesus, well, we believe in you first of all because of what the woman said. Yes. But we no longer believe in you because of not what she said now, yes. but because we have seen you yes. and experienced you for ourselves. Yes. And I'm saying, friends, you need to understand that if you're going to hold on to your accent, yes. you have to have a personal relationship yes. with the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Because things are going to come at you that you have never seen before. Yes. You need to understand the need to hold on to your accent. You see, there are places we can fall when we lose our accent. I believe that any person who has come to know the Lord Jesus Christ and has come to understand the relationship that we have with him, I believe that no matter how far or how deep one falls, God can still save me. I believe that. But I want to also say this, that sometimes the devil can take us places. The devil can take our lives from places where it becomes a challenge for God to save us. I believe that it's possible for God to do anything, but it becomes very challenging, so to speak, for us to return to the faith is what I really want to say. There are places that the devil can take us and it's very, very far. I've seen so many people who have fallen 
pray to God, something happened in their life. And they began to doubt God and question God. And they allowed Satan to take them so far that even sometimes after they return, they're not the same. That's why they need to hold on to action. There are places we can fall in when we lose our relationship with God that they make it challenging to return. Jonah went from a prophet to the bottom of a ship to the bottom of the sea. God had to work on Jonah to get him back to where he needed to go. Peter went from a stalwart follower of the Lord Jesus Christ where he said, Jesus, you know what you said? Let me go. Let me go. This is one here. Let me go. I will lay down my life for you. And I believe, friends, that in that garden, Peter wasn't going after anybody ears. He was so devoted to the Lord. He was asking Peter what's going for the head. But the man might have done. Because Peter wanted to show the Lord Jesus Christ how much he loved him and how faithful he was to him. But Jesus had said to him, before the cock throws, you will deny me Christ. And he wept bitterly. He's your father, Peter. Wept. Eh? Peter, who was the star Lord, I mean, Jesus said to Peter, look, there's a rock man who's going to Jerusalem to be betrayed and to be crucified. And Peter said, hey, hey, Lord, this can't happen to you. You know, in the scripture, this can't happen to you. I, I mean, he, he was there all the time. He was your faithful to Lord Jesus Christ. But we see you here. Having lost his access to between his relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us that he went out and he went bitterly. It was not easy. Jesus had to take him when after he uh, was resurrected. And if you study the Bible in John, Peter, he had to question him deeply. The prodigal son went from a position where he was served to where he was serving things. Can you imagine that? From a position where he had servants in his home to a position where he was longing now to eat that which was given to the pig. Satan can take us down very far when he fails to hold on to our head. Judas went from the position of being the treasurer to where he committed suicide. And it happened in our country where he never got out of the murder suicide taking place. People who have no hope were given up. If you don't hold on to your heart to threat, your relationship with God, He can take you down pretty far and pretty fast. So hold on to your heart's head. I cannot forget, I cannot forget George Francis at my wife's. Uh, yes, I was here too. But when we were getting married, a beautiful girl came forward and she sang. As the, the vows were already, I, I think the vows were said and uh, uh, were signed, paper and everything. Couldn't change on my class. <laughs> and uh, Upon consideration, I'm glad I didn't. <laughs> but John Francis came forward. And she sang. And boy, she had a, the voice of a ninja. It was so beautiful. I turned to my wife and I said, Who is that girl? And she said, It's my friend, John Francis. And uh, she told me the story. She said, You know, when I went to Bible College, because that's where we met, Joan should have come with me. But her boyfriend said to her, uh, don't worry about no Bible College. Let me get here. And uh, the story went on to say that uh, she didn't go to Bible college. She went into a relationship with her boyfriend. The next thing we heard, she was pregnant and she was married. 
The next thing we heard was that while she was giving birth, the baby died. And she died also. You see, sometimes we allow things to detract us from our relationship to the Lord Jesus Christ. And things can happen where we get pulled back so far that we never get the chance to come back to the Lord Jesus Christ. And I say to you tonight, whatever you're going through, it might be discouragement, hold on to your accent. It might be sickness, hold on to your accent. It might be a broken heart, hold on to your accent. Whatever life may throw at you in this case of evil, hold on to your accent. May God bless you.
And oh God, we'll acknowledge you as Lord and Savior of his life. Oh God, whatever you have to do, oh God, whatever you have to do, oh God, what, 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 whatever circumstances you have to do, that you bring in his life, like Jonah, oh God, we pray that even now you'll be working upon him. And you will not stop, oh God, because we will not stop praying even after we leave this place, oh God. Because we are told that even if one soul comes to you, oh God, and we make it that one soul tonight, that, oh God, there will be a rejoicing in heaven. Yes. And, oh God, we await that time of rejoicing to join those angels as he comes to you. And he says, yes, I now receive you as my Lord and Savior. Oh God, we pray that you will be with his wife, oh God. That you will continue to set the kind of example. That, oh God, uh, her life will not be a deterrent, oh God, to him accepting the gospel, oh God. But as the word of God says, let your light so shine before men that they will see your good deeds. And they will come to glorify my Father who is in heaven. So we pray, O oh God, that you will let your shine a light, O oh God, that, O oh God, will reflect you, and that he will, O oh God, respond to such a calling. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Hallelujah. Let me use the opportunity on behalf of the fraternal to thank you all for coming and in the same breath say to you the next stop, the gospel train continues next week, Money Town, the opposite the square, I wasn't sure if it's square or town, the opposite the police station, but friends, let us be praying daily for this, the fraternal led by our chairman said we are not just going internal, we're going external. And that is the focus. So we are going to connect with the community. And who knows? May this husband pray for our the first to respond at this at that time. With God, all things are possible. Amen. And please remember, you come out and invite out the unsafe. Remember, grow with your crown. Yes. Amen. Amen. So if they see a crown, people will stop. If it's just one or two. They won't, but crowd drop out. So you are a part of the crowd, so make sure you are there. We want to thank our musician, our choir, the technical team, and all who have served to help today service be a reality. I'm going to invite our chairman to come and do the benediction, and then we shall go out singing to God be the glory. Great things he has done. Mr. Chairman, will you come and pronounce God's benediction over his feet? Please, sir. Now unto him who have loved us and washed us in his own blood, to him be honor, dominion, now and forevermore. Amen. 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 The first stanza, to God be the glory, and the chorus we may begin to depart.